in 1868 and again in 1870, at a turning point in her life, Mary Baker Glover took refuge in Miss Sarah Bagley's home here at Amesbury, Massachusetts. Sarah was one of the very first students to whom she taught Christian science healing. Fifty years later, when Mary Beecher Longyear first stepped into the former Bagley parlor, she found, among many other things, what she referred to as a mahogany melodeon. This instrument, more precisely called a reed organ, was handcrafted around 1845. So it may well have been part of Mrs. Eddy's life here, nearly 25 years after that. Music did mean a lot to her. When she stayed with the Wentworth family in Stoughton, between her two stays in Amesbury, she enjoyed family singing around their harmonium. Mrs. Eddy joined in hymns to the tune of a small organ during Christian Science services at Good Templars Hall in Lynn, a decisive step toward founding her church. Her student, Putney Bancroft, recalled the little melodeon on which my wife played and my own feeble attempts to lead the singing. Mrs. Eddy's sense of musical harmony was touched on in her first address in the Mother Church. She said, Music is the harmony of being, but the music of soul affords the only strains that thrill the chords of feeling and awaken the heart's harp strings. As part of its program to restore the Amesbury House, which represents a crucial time in Mrs. Eddy's life, Longyear Museum decided to restore this reed organ. Debbie Slade Pierce, a former music teacher, and Longyear's collections assistant, visited Joe Sloan's restoration workshop in Waltham, Massachusetts to get a peek at repair and reassembly. Expert organ restorer Joe Sloan had to piece together clues to trace its origin. When you first looked at this instrument in the storage unit, it looked different to you. What were your impressions right away? So I had never actually seen an instrument that on the outside looked very similar to what I would refer to as a melodeon. With these, with these octagonal legs and this keyboard, uh, horizontal style and the keyboard in the front that was made to imitate a square piano. Which is what we thought this was. Exactly. Melodeon. So the way this instrument works is that there's this, I'll move these springs out of the way, but there's this large rectangular bellows that sits behind the keyboard and as the player would pedal and it's just that one pedal in the front this bellows would rise up like this hmm. to about this level if it rose up any higher than this this little escape valve would hit the inside of the case and open and that would prevent the bellows from over inflating oh. you can hear it Mm -hmm. Now, here's something that we could do. We could find probably some in the middle there somewhere and see. <laughs> the other thing that's really fascinating about this is the condition of the leather. If you look at these little corners in here, um, some of it is deteriorated, but some of it is in amazing condition for leather that's oh. 140 years old. In, the, in our pipe organ work in 2020, we strive to get 20 or 30 years of life out of leather as it's tanned with modern methods. So to look at this and see what type of leather that they used so many years ago and the condition that it is in is really very informative. If the instrument were assembled, the keyboard would sit just in this position. Yes. And then when you take the keyboard away, what you see are these little, these little pieces of wood which look like dowels, but they're tapered hmm. to go down into a very small hole. Another, another example of the, the handmade aspect of this is that every one of these is different. 
there's some here's one that's really very thin next to one that's very thick and they're not all exactly the same length which was which was an early indication of a handmade thing this instrument um, I think it's fair to say that there isn't another one like this around. Um, I think it's great that this exists in the collection and something that, you know, in the years that I have been in the pipe organ business and, and um, subsequently doing over a lot of melodians and other keyboard instruments, it's the kind of thing that people who, who are really fascinated by these instruments would love to see. Rebuilding the instrument to playing condition was not attempted, because it might destroy historically significant details. The refurbished reed organ is now in storage, waiting to be returned to Amesbury to take its place in the restored interior of this important Mary Baker Eddy historic house.